What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And as you can see, it has snowed. It's actually, melt a lot of it's melted, but just, you know what I mean? Hey, don't see this in Texas, do you? Alright, so guys, uh, today I'm doing the first episode of a something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and that is blacksmithing. Um, and actually, in this video, I'm going to show you how I light my forge. I use coal as my main so, uh, heat source, but I also use uh, lump charcoal in order to, order to get the fire started. So this video, I'm going to show you how that's done. Uh, what I'm going to do is this intro part's going to be, you know, outside. The rest of it, I'm going to do a voiceover. So hopefully it comes out pretty good, and I hope you guys enjoy this. All right, so the first thing I do is I take a couple handfuls of paper shreds and I put it into the firebox. Uh, paper shreds make for a very good tinder as it will burn up really fast, but there's enough of it to keep it going for a little bit. Uh, then I take another handful of paper shreds and I put it into the chimney itself. And then I go into the bag of charcoal and I find some small to medium pieces of it to put into the chimney. Alright, once I'm satisfied with how much I put in there, I take my torch and I light the fire. I tend to use my uh, uh, butane torch because it's extremely hard to misplace, <laughs> let's put it that way. But you can also use a, just a regular lighter uh, or a grill lighter. It, it doesn't really matter, uh, just as long as you can get the fire going. Uh, one thing to know about using paper shreds is that it does smoke a lot, especially when you uh, turn on your air pump. Um, it blows smoke everywhere, and that can be a very, very annoying thing. But, you know, it's just one of those things about forging. All right, so you'll see me checking my air pump just to make sure that I'm not blowing too much air into the firebox or not enough. You you got to, it's kind of a balancing act. You need to make sure you have, have it intense, but not so intense that it burns away your fuel before it can catch the actual charcoal on fire. Uh, every once in a while, I'll listen to the charcoal, and once I hear it crackling, then I know it's time to put a little bit of coal in, a little bit of charcoal, and then flip over the chimney. During this time, you need to make sure that you don't have your air source too high or too low. Always check. That's the biggest thing to check is to make sure your air flow is perfect. It's, I've seen a lot of people, including myself, make the mistake of burning a fire too hot or burning it too cold. And there's not really... It's not really easy to tell sometimes when it's burning uh, too hot or too cold. Um, sometimes it's just easier to... And sometimes it seems easier just to light your fire and have it going full blast all the time. But trust me, you don't want to do that because you'll burn through your fuel too fast and you, you won't have a good fire. You'll be using more fuel than uh, if you were to lower the airflow down a little bit. So I'm using a little metal rod I had. It's a little quarter inch rod of square stock. And I'm using that to kind of move the coals around. It's always nice to make sure your coals are somewhat centered over the airflow or the air vent. That way they're getting a lot of air and 
they'll start to burn hotter. The coals that are, if the coals are too far to the sides, it won't get enough air and it won't burn as, burn as hot. So now I'm pouring in some actual coal. This coal is a, comes from a 15, uh, 50 pound bag that I bought at a uh, farrier shop. And if you'll notice, the smoke, when, it, when the coal starts burning, it starts to turn a little bit yellow. That's the sign that your coal is finally starting to burn. Now this is actually when the only time coal actually per, uh, produces smoke is on the, the entry of it. Like when you first put in coal, it will smoke, but after it gets good and hot, it will stop smoking and you'll have a smokeless fire. I think that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, you'll see a little bit of close-up of my little setup here. I got two. Uh, I use a brake drum here. And then I have two valves to control airflow and an electric pump. I hope this uh, video was uh, helpful. It, it, I had a hard time finding videos like this on the internet when I was uh, starting, starting out as a blacksmith. I'm still not the most experienced and I hope to be able to continue to learn. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time.